In this video, we were off to a shaky start. We probably have about 70 centimeters of water. Okay, I can't hear the call. <laughs> We were checking the rigging one last time before leaving the dock. One of our pulley or blocks had disintegrated in the sun from last time we furled out the mainsail. But luckily we had some old spares on board so it was easy to swap out. Buffing and uh, checking the, the turnbuckles one last time before we try and move from here. Just And we're gonna pin them as well. So just checking, checking that's all good before our trip. It's always good to check for, for cracks and unexpected problems like a missing pin, a cracked pin, crack around the chain plate, crack on the chain plate. Just have a general look-see at all the, the joints along the way. The tough job made everything really dirty and sticky. It's definitely holding on to dirt. We had not put pins in the turnbuckles since stepping the mast in the boatyard because Robbie anticipated tuning the rigging over time while we were here at the dock. We decided to dig out the one other sail that we have in our inventory, a small jib that might be better for upwind sailing. Mark? No, that's good. Can't wait to put a goddamn autofill on this thing. This purest sailing thing is, is for all timers. Good sail to go upwind, so you can really, it's pretty taut. It's not too small, so we can put it in small headwinds which are coming up. It's very, very small. You can imagine what a boat would be like with a brand new Genoa with 100%. Go so all the way up and come all the way here. Right now, we wouldn't be able to open it in this wind. It's like six, seven knots downwind. On the list of odd small jobs before leaving was trying to desperately JB weld or glue some leaks on the engine. This one on the exhaust attachment point, a welded metal reducer that came with a defective weld that was letting saltwater exhaust drip everywhere. We also decided to take the plunge and to jury rig the floor up with some metal braces. They might not be the best quality, but it would be much more comfortable to sail without the cabin sole caving in. Lastly, very important, 
we finished with what electrical power we had at the dock to carve our serpent tiller and sealed it with oil. And we would have to be quite comfortable steering it too. It was going to be all hand steering for the next couple of days. We've packed everything away as much as possible. We've made the boat as tidy as possible and plugged from the dock. We have as much water in the tanks as possible. We didn't get fuel yet, but we also have to try and get rid of the motorbike today and I don't know how we're going to do it. We were supposed to sell it in the last week and no luck. It's very difficult to buy and sell here, I find. We have the water tank full, but we also have a lot of drinking water, jerry cans. We, we got as many as we could. Depth sounder. Ravi managed to attach it to a GoPro articulating arm. We have apparently 1.7 from where the depth sounder is, which is just on the hull above the keel. So our keel is about a meter. We probably have about 70 centimeters of water. Starting. Okay. Oh, go. Get a bit. Yeah. I would be in the engine room controlling the gear shifter and the throttle lever. Robbie would be giving me instructions over the roar of the engine, and hopefully the gear and the throttle would not give me too much trouble. Okay, vamos. Estamos de. Se quita esta cuerda, la de la de medio, la de frente. Voy a decir. The marina guys graciously helped us by throwing us our dock lines. Okay. Okay, just la de frente está quitada, ya. Yeah? Okay, just in reverse. More power. More power, more, more power in reverse, yes. The forward and reverse gears still had a tendency to slip and to lose power. It was still nearly at full throttle, but it sounded like it was revving down. This was the maximum revs it would operate at for now. Is there a little bit more power on the reverse just to see if it goes? That's up? off! Ah, it's on full! That's full! Okay. We had backed out just enough, now it was time to go into forward. Okay, try and kick it slow, put it in slow and then kick it forward. Forward? Yes, forward. As much gas as you can. It was not easy to have any sort of complex conversation here. Forward, backwards, high or low would suffice. The plan was to anchor at the spot where we had anchored when we first arrived in Progresso. Maneuvering back into the slip was going to be very complicated, and it was time to go out and to test our boat anyways. Okay, 
that's half power because I don't want it to like go. No, um, put it on full. Let's see what it's got. Okay. I want to see if it reaches full RPM. Yes, everything's still here. You're on the boat. The rescue showed up and we have to anchor somewhere different for some reason. We can't an anchor here anymore. We were first visited by the marine rescue and when we told them that it would be unsafe to make us move for no good discernible reason, they sent over the navy and then eventually I think it was the port captain. So we're trying to anchor here and they really don't want us to anchor here, but we don't really have another option of where to anchor. There's no other place to anchor in here that's safe. And of course, this whole saga of not being able to maneuver the boat very easily is, yeah. Now we have to go to the spot that's not marked as an anchorage. We're worried there's more traffic. We're more likely to get hit by boats because there's tons of traffic. And then what do we do then? Like, I, I, we kind of tried to push it so that we wouldn't have to move because we really feel that we were safer where we were. But they sent up the higher ups and then they boarded our boat and they, they said move into the non anchorage. So, so we are. Okay, now we're anchored for real. We moved back in towards like the inner harbor where the bridge is. It's not as good of an anchorage because there's a lot more traffic. There's a lot of fishing boats going back and forth and we're, we've got the bridge right behind us. So if the anchor fails in any way or if we drag in any way, we're hitting the bridge with our mast. So we're not really happy to have had to anchor here, but we're anchored safely as far as we can be. That was just not a good start you know we're already stressed out about the fact that the engine doesn't work very well we have a really hard time maneuvering in the harbor you know having to do any difficult maneuvers like going back into a dock right now me in the engine room having to shift into forward or reverse quickly enough uh, i can't hear anything robbie will scream you know ah put it into forward or put it into uh, neutral or put it into reverse as we were trying to anchor kind of takes them a couple of tries to and to confirm you know 
we need to get it we actually do need to get a system i guess like a bell or something because i it's really hard to hear each other yeah not impressed they came out they said you can't anchor here we said why not give us a reason it's marked on the charts that we can anchor here we anchored here before we came in to the astiero to the boatyard um, we anchored there for two days before the boatyard opened our plan was to get off the dock to test the engine we weren't sure if we were going to you know how far we were going to make it today and we made it to the anchorage we were really happy with that at the time and it's right close to the fuel dock it means that we just kayak over to the fuel dock get the rest of our fuel get some vegetables at the nearby store and then we can go when the wind is best which is the next couple of days the the authorities came out in a in a uh, different layers of <laughs> of authority there were three guys and i i didn't catch everybody's uh kind of level of who they were but i think one of them was the port captain he came out and he's and he checked our paperwork and he said you know, I, you can't anchor here. And they didn't, they couldn't really give us a reason other than, oh, boats have to maneuver in the harbor. And we said, yes, this is the biggest part of the harbor for, and has an anchoring mark on every chart we have uh, so that we're not interfering with safe navigation. Then the third guy came out and basically got really angry with us. And we were just like, but you don't have a reason for us not to anchor here. And we're in distress, essentially. We don't have a fully functioning engine. We can't go into the dock very easily. Can you give us, can you help us? Like maybe give us a tow into the dock? We, you know, we're not gonna sail into the dock and we're not gonna, we explained our motor and all the complexities of it. And they were like, no, no, we can't help you. Call, call the other guys. And the other guys where we were at the marina are very, very helpful, very wonderful. So the marine rescue boat with 900 horsepower, they said, no, we can't uh, help you get to a dock. The marina that we've been staying at are really wonderful people. I can't say enough good things about them, um, except that they have a tiny little dinghy with a tiny little outboard engine. And that's how they got us from the boatyard to the marina uh, originally. And that that's not <laughs> better than the 900 horsepower rescue vessel. So yeah, just, you know, just fun times with the authorities. <laughs> so at least one good thing, we've, we've tested the engine now. We were forced to do a little extra testing of the engine, <laughs> a little extra practicing of, of maneuvers under, under engine power. Uh, we've got a lot of vibration, but so far so good. Everything about the engine was just inconvenient and awkward. The next morning with very little wind, we started it up raised the mainsail, and prepared the jib. I raised the anchor while Robbie held the engine in neutral as best as he could, and then finally, we were off. I raised the jib just as we exited the shallow port and asked Robbie why we weren't fishing yet. Get your fishing line in the water, man. Yeah, this time I'll take it a little easy. <laughs> Plus, we're not going fast enough for fish. The engine stayed on for as long as it took to get out of the harbor entrance, at least. The stuffing box got very hot, even though it was dripping. Oh. Uh, it got pretty hot. So but that's that a new stuffing box. I think there needs to be uh, a lot of water dripping to it, especially when it's new. But I didn't want to have fill the bilge with water, but I think it needs to like drip, 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 mm. drip. It didn't go as planned, of course, yesterday, last night, because of our anchoring situation. But then uh, we got everything done this morning. More water, a little more fuel, fill the ice box, put the drinks in there, and a little bit of meat for you. I expect fish. <laughs> I demand <laughs> I didn't, fish. I didn't pack any protein except for beans. We've got our setup here, the articulating arm, two articulating arm type devices for the chart plotter and the compass. It's not 
as good as we hoped. The compass is not held as, as nicely as I wanted it to be. We had some metal pieces, but I couldn't drill through the stainless to make a, a nice arm. drill to the uru, the vibranium. That yes, we discovered vibranium because I drilled at this piece for two days straight, like with hours. Three different drill bits. With different drill bits, all our drill bits. And you went and you bought a drill bit and eh. We're yeah. looking at an upwind slog. 200 miles of upwind slog. It's pretty much upwind, 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 with uh, kind of interspersed with some little bursts maybe of uh, not directly in our face, so we'll see how much tacking it's gonna take. Ooh, is that a turtle? Yep, super smooth to sail the boat. Move the tail of it. One finger. Oh, I haven't seen how much wind. As usual, we're taking turns at the tiller. Robbie's just warmed up some tortilla. Got a little bit of a pico, an easy packet of black beans. I'm making myself an egg, bean, pico, tortilla. A burrito. We should have today and tomorrow this same offshore breeze for half the day. And then around two o'clock, the wind should turn more in our face so that we can head out and then at night-ish afternoon the, the wind comes back to shore and when that happens we can head back in. That's what we're going to do, we're going to tie into that. And we made our way up and around the famous 6.5 kilometer long pier that juts out into the sea in front of Progresso and now started along our actual route forward. Really just there. Once in a while, you have to pull a little bit to stop. We were sailing alongside the long, monotonous shoreline of houses that slowly disappears until there's nothing left but flat green marshland and wind farms. Heading up wind, it's quite splashy. Getting a lot of water over the deck. Oh, the doggy is seasick. Robbie ended up simply bringing the running backs to the cockpit winches to help reduce flexing of the mast while we beat up wind. I checked the bilges regularly for water and noticed a leak in the small forward hatch.
night. I've got life jacket clipped in. I've got clips. We've got harness for Ravi and for Choco his version of a harness. You packed in the fishing for the night? Yeah, I'm packing up. The wind actually began to calm when the sun went down until there was no wind at all. We were in about four meters of water and simply dropped the anchor. <laughs>